I'm Standing on a Million Lives is sort of a weird series that is hard to describe without spoiling too much, but I'll try. I'm a manga reader, so I'm basing most of this off of the current manga up to whatever chapter I'm on, but I'll also be giving my thoughts on the anime and based off the first episode at the time of this recording, so don't be too surprised if I'm a little bit manga biased. So anyone familiar with the series Gans, if you're not, visual aid might help. The Gans man, you know. Imagine him going through S&M training, lobbing off the top side of his head, and deciding to send people to a fantasy world to clear quests with very deceptive conditions. While Yotsuya Yosuke isn't as much of a sad sack as K. Corona, he has a very similar negative outlook and outward apathy for the world at large. Both these main protagonists are thrown into very different circumstances. Minor spoilers for both series ahead. Krona dies to get to a barren Tokyo apartment room where he and several other recently deceased people are told to fight aliens using sci-fi technology by a black ball with a bald bino man inside. Conversely, Yusuke is teleported to a fantasy world where he's told by that S&M game master the basic rules and given a starter class, which in his case is one of the rare ones of Farmer. It's not revealed right away, but one of the rules of this game is if you die, you get revived in a certain time frame. It starts out at 30 seconds unless the entire party wipes then it's game over. On the surface, these two series might seem polar opposites. One being sci-fi, if you die, you stay dead. And the other being a fantasy world where you come back almost unlimited amount of times. But the core elements do seem to run parallel with each other. In fact, I'm Standing on a Million Lives might be an evolution of the Gans game theory model but I might just be a crackpot. If ReZero taught us anything, that would be that sometimes surviving death is worse than just staying dead. Since they can't die, the loss of a million lives, what's with that light novelish overly long name, I'm just gonna call it million lives from now on, takes a different form. But the psychologics of it somehow remains the same in my opinion. The change in the game mechanics also reflect modern day games in a much better way. You can go up against a game boss until your party wipes, then you gotta start all over. A million lives, you don't even have that luxury. Okay, time to be frank, a million lives ain't no Gans, but I can't help but see some influence in the series that is labeled Shonen, so... Mm. It's really not going to have the same level of violence and sexiness of Gans. The class system it reminds me also a lot of Gans. So you think, okay, they get a class, this is going to be an OP fantasy. Just sort of like how Gans had the super powerful suits and awesome weapons, but no. The classes, the basic starting classes suck. Wind Mage can pretty much a hair dryer. Then you have the inept swordswoman who base her stats off of her physical stats, which is a sickly girl from real life Japan. So, no. Of those a million lives referenced in the title, I would have to guess uh, roughly half of them are their own previous lives that they are standing on. And I must say, for people labeled as heroes, they sure do get killed a lot. Without that cheat code of lives, the game would be as over as soon as it started. They aren't just outclassed by most monsters they go up against. In the second game, Yosuke gets his ass beat by a mid-level 70-place tournament winner who's a female knight who actually gets some decent character development both in this series and the next game. Now you might be thinking seeing the hero of the story get killed over and over again might not be very satisfying. But really with the recent endless stream of overpower isekai protagonists stamping and trampling all over the fantasy setting they're thrust into, 
it's sort of nice to see some major pushback to that. Also, I am frankly get annoyed by all these upbeat attitudes of main characters or just blank uh, perfectness, Gary Stewness, who are most of the time dumb as a box of rocks despite being labeled geniuses in magic or whatever thing they do. They get steamroll over enemies and get all the girls is really getting on my nerves. It's nice to see a really awkward, socially inept protagonist with his bad attitude not get rewarded for that. But him being the hero of the story or main protagonist, matter how you want to look at it, he has a more natural progression, getting more comfortable with his comrades and having to win their trust instead of having it being handed to him on a silver tray. As much as I enjoyed ReZero with all its ups and downs and also Goblin Slayer, again, having some issues here and there, I'm Standing on a Million Lives has some issues. But Yusuke is a much better protagonist in my opinion than Subaru or Mr. Goblin Slayer character wise. Even compared to Krona, he's a bit more toned down in the edginess factor. Now I'm not sure how the overall anime will turn out. I only watched one episode so I can only give you my impression on it off of that. The CG mixed in really isn't quite as bad as I thought it would be based on the trailers. Still pretty bad, but definitely not as bad as Commonplace Sun or even some parts of the Glorious Overlord series. The setup for the main character might have even been better in the anime compared to the manga. It has a good tone, good pacing, the animation really isn't that bad. It actually quite good for the newly formed Studio Maho. Sure, there are no Gainax, Madhouse, Trigger, or even IG, but it's not as flat as something like uh, Wise Man's Grandson, which is a personal cringe watch of mine that I am quite ashamed of. So, as far as I can tell, as long as they follow the manga's path and add a little bit of details and don't fuck up too much with the CG, the anime should actually be passable. And as for the Gans thing, as I said, for Shonen, this is as close as we're gonna get to the Gans fans in probably the next few years, so any Gans fans, watch it. Anyone tired of the isekai or fantasy overpoweredness, watch this. People who actually like character development and sort of tactical fantasy magic crap watch this otherwise if none of that sounds interesting to you skip it i'm sure something will come along to your taste so much shit out there till next time bye